is to contain the spread of the disease. I am concerned that a rapid rise in infections will stretch our health services beyond what we can manage and many people will not be able to access the care that they need. We must therefore do everything within our means to reduce the overall number of infections and to delay the spread of infection over a longer period, what is known as flattening the curve of infections. It is essential that every person in South Africa should adhere strictly and without exception to the regulations that have already been put in place and to the measures that I am going to announce this evening. Our analysis of the progress of the epidemic informs that the, us that we need to urgently and dramatically escalate our response. The next few days are crucial. Without decisive action, the number of people infected will rapidly increase from a few hundred to tens of thousands and within a few weeks to hundreds of thousands. This is extremely dangerous for a population like ours, which has a large number of people with suppressed immunity because of HIV and TB and high levels of poverty and malnutrition. We have learned a great deal from the experience of other countries. Those countries that have acted swiftly and dramatically have been far more effective in controlling the spread of the disease. As a consequence, the National Coronavirus Command Council has decided to enforce a nationwide lockdown for 21 days with effect from midnight on Thursday the 26th of March. This is a decisive measure to save lives of South Africans from infection and save the lives of hundreds of thousands of our people. While this measure will have a considerable impact on people's livelihoods, on the life of our society and on our economy, the human cost of delaying this action would be far, far greater. The nationwide lockdown will be enacted in terms of the Disaster Management Act and will entail the following. From midnight on Thursday, 26th March, until midnight, Thursday, the 16th of April, all South Africans will have to stay at home. The categories of people who will be expected, exempted from this lockdown are the following. Health workers in the public and private sectors, emergency personnel, those in security services such as the police, traffic officers, military medical personnel, soldiers, and other persons necessary for our response to the pandemic. It will also include those involved in the production, distribution, and supply of food and basic goods, essential banking services, the maintenance of power, water and telecommunication services, laboratory services, and the provision of medical and hygiene products. A full list of essential personnel will be published in due course. Individuals will not be allowed to leave their homes except under strictly controlled circumstances, such as to seek medical care, buy food, medicine and other supplies, or collect a social grant. Temporary shelters that meet the necessary hygiene standards will be identified for homeless people. Sites are also being identified for quarantine and self-isolation for people who cannot self-isolate at home. All shops and businesses will be closed except for pharmacies, laboratories, banks, 
essential financial payment services, including the JSC, supermarkets, petrol stations, and healthcare providers. Companies that are essential to the production and transportation of food, basic goods, and medical supplies will remain open. We will publish a full list of the categories of businesses that should remain open. Companies whose operations require continuous processes such as furnaces, underground mine operations will be required to make arrangements for care and maintenance to avoid damage to their continuous operations. Firms that are able to continue their operations remotely should do so. Provision will be made for essential transport services to continue including transport for essential staff and for patients who need to be managed elsewhere. The nationwide lockdown is necessary to fundamentally disrupt the chain of transmission across society. I have accordingly directed the South African National Defense Force to be deployed to support the South African Police Service in ensuring that the measures we are announcing are implemented. This nationwide lockdown will be accompanied by a public health management program, which will significantly increase screening, testing, contact tracing, and medical management. Community health teams will focus on expanding screening and testing where people live, focusing first on high density and high risk areas. To ensure that hospitals are not overwhelmed, a system will be put in place for centralized patient management for severe cases and decentralized primary care for mild cases. Emergency water supplies using water storage tanks Water tankers, boreholes, and communal stand pipes are being provided to informal settlements and rural areas. A number of additional measures will be implemented with immediate effect to strengthen prevention measures. Some of these measures are that South African citizens and residents arriving from high-risk countries will automatically be placed under quarantine for 14 days. From high-risk country we prohibited a week ago will be turned back. International flights to Lanseria Airport will temporarily be suspended. International travelers who arrived in South Africa after 9th March 